What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Revis Talk Sports. I am back again with an NFL Divisional Bowl prediction. In this video, I will be talking about the AFC South. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So the first team that I will be talking about is the Tennessee Titans. And my bowl prediction is that Will Levis will finish top five in single season passing yards in Titans history. King Henry has gone to the Baltimore Ravens and they have a brand new coaching staff. And I personally believe that this will be one of the most pass heavy teams in the NFL. They bring in Brian Callahan as the head coach in which he was the offensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals for five years. And an average of those five years, they finished top 10 in pass play percentage, top 10 in pass attempts, and top 15 in pa average passing yards per game. And they also bring in Nick Holes, who was a passing coordinator for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And in his lone season last year, they finished top 10 in passing yards per game. So I do think this would be one of the most pass happy teams in the NFL. They have DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley. Tyler Boyd, Traylon Burks is there, and they also have Pollard and Spears, who I believe will be a nice dash-dash duo who will not only help in the run game, but also in the passing-receiving game. Um, but I personally believe that with the new coaching staff and with the nice trio that they have and having Pollard and Spears, I do think that we will see Will Levis' potential. I do see that the ball is going to be flying at the Titans, and I personally believe that Will Levis will finish top 10 in single season passing yards in Titans history. Don't think that he'll shatter the Roaring Moons this season, but I can definitely see him overtaking Ryan Tannehill, in which T Tannehill has the top three and top four spots in Titans history single season. So my bold prediction, Will Levis will be slinging the rock with a nice trio and nice receiving running backs and the new coaching staff. I expect Will Levis to probably finish top five in single season passing yards in Titans history. Now the next team I will be talking about is the Jacksonville Jaguars. And my bold prediction is that Brian Thomas Jr. will lead the team in receiving yards. I understand that Marvin Harrison Jr. has the elite route running ability. Malik Neighbors has like the yards after catch. But Brian Thomas Jr. is probably one of the most dangerous vertical deep threats in the rookie draft class. Um, and I think he's gonna play a big role in this offense. They pay Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is probably a top. Trevor Lawrence is a top five quarterback in the NFL in terms of deep ball attempts and air yards. And I believe that's going to suit Brian Thomas Jr.'s game. He will help stretch the field for the offense as well as become a deep threat. I believe that with him stretching the field, there will be opportunities for Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, and Evan Ingram. Christian Kirk hasn't been healthy throughout the majority of his NFL history. And I don't think that Gabe Davis is capable, capable of being that wide receiver one for the Jaguars. So they are looking for that wide receiver one in this team. And I think Brian Thomas Jr. can lead, the, can lead the team in receiving yards. And also the Jacksonville Jaguars this past season, they finished top three in the NFL in pass completions over 40 yards. I think this will suit Brian, Jr., Brian Thomas Jr.'s game. And I do think that he can lead this team in receiving yards. Now, the next team that I will be talking about is the Indianapolis Colts. And my bold prediction is that I got Anthony Richardson winning the comeback player of the year. I understand that we had a small sample size of him before he hurt his shoulder and got shut down. But in that small sample size, he did have a pretty good rookie season. And let's talk about the rushing touchdowns. I mean, four rushing touchdowns in four games. Had he kept that pace throughout the end of the season, he could have broken the record of most rushing touchdowns in a single season by a quarterback in which Josh Allen now has. So he was on a good pace for the rushing touchdowns um, history breaking mark. And honestly, he's a deep, he loves to throw the deep ball. And I just think that him coming back health, healthy, hopefully he can play a full season healthy and not be too, too aggressive in the run game. I think he can definitely help this team out. I mean, Shane Steichen is probably one of the top play callers in the NFL. Offensively, they have Jonathan Taylor, uh, Michael Pittman, Adonai Mitchell, Josh Downs, Alec Pierce. So he has a solid supporting cast around him. And I know in the comeback player of the year award list right now, it's Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow, and Kirk Cousins. The one edge that I give Anthony Richardson over those three is his dual threat ability. Shane Steichen said that he is not going to limit him and let Richardson play his style. And if that is the case, I can see Anthony Richardson throwing for over 3,000 yards and having over 800 rushing yards. And he could potentially have 
20 plus passing touchdowns and probably at least 10 rushing touchdowns in which Kirk, Burrow, and Rodgers will probably not get. The Colts are going to have to be competitive in the AFC South, and they're, and Anthony Richardson is going to play a big role in this offense. And I just think that if he could just, you know, be healthy throughout the season and continue his dual threat ability in the rushing and passing game, I see him being a dark horse to win the comeback player of the year, especially if he can help the, uh, the Colts make it to the playoffs and become a good threat in the division as well in the AFC. But my dark horse of comeback player of the year is I think healthy Anthony Richardson can be a phenomenal player in the passing and running game as a quarterback. Now, last but not least, we will be talking about the Houston Texans. This player came into the NFL and pretty much took the lead by storm. They drafted him second in the NFL draft, took the team to the playoffs in his first season as a quarterback, threw for 4,000 plus yards, and had a QBR rating of over 100. So with that being said, I have CJ Stroud finishing top five in passing yards and touchdowns. With the acquisition of Stephon Diggs and Joe Mixon, this offense is going to be gun blazing and going to be probably the most elite offensive core in the NFL. You have Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell, uh, Dalton Schultz, Nico Collins, and Joe Mixon. He's gonna He has probably one of the best supporting cast in the NFL, and you can definitely tell that the Texans have Super Bowl aspirations based off the draft class they had and offseason acquisitions, and this team is ready to roll. They had the potential to be back-to-back -back divisional winners, potential number one season in the AFC, depending on how the season goes. They do have a really, really tough schedule. I believe they had like a top four or fifth hardest schedule in the NFL, and they do have about six to seven primetime games in which they are against elite NFL teams, most of them made the playoffs, some of them made the conference championship game, and a Super Bowl winner. So they're going to be on prime time. The lights are going to be bright for this Houston, Texas team to see what they are about. If CJ Stroud could have a phenomenal performance and at least win a majority of those games and have just dominant performances, just airing the ball out, multiple touchdowns, and potentially just show that he can be not only the face of the franchise, but be the next quarterback to take the league by storm. He could potentially have an MVP season. He could potentially have an MVP season if he is able to help the Texans win an extra game. So they won 10 last year. If he could help them win at least 12, win a majority of their primetime games, potentially lead the league in passing yards and touchdown passes, but just have a dominant performance in primetime specifically, CJ Stroud has a case to win MVP. And I would not blow it past me if he has a great season and wins the MVP, but I do think that he will finish top five in passing yards and in and touchdowns just based off his supporting cast. And since he does have limited running ability, I just think that he'll remain in the pocket a lot and just lean the ball. And yeah, he could potentially be a top five quarterback by end of next season. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy the content, please give the video a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments below on your AFC South predictions. Thank you so much for watching this video and catch you next week.